Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on solved problem number 1 in SQL. Let's see the question now. Here we go. A relation R with the attributes A, B. There are two attributes. In a relational database has 1200 tuples. The attribute A has integer values ranging from 6 to 20 and the attribute B has integer values ranging from 1 to 20. Assume that the attributes A and B are independently distributed. Please make a note of this which is very very important in order to solve this problem in an easier way. What's the question? We are required to find the estimated number of tuples in the output of select from the relation R which satisfies the condition A greater than 10 or B is equal to 18. This question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2021. Before solving this problem, let's focus on the given data. The first given data is attribute A has integer values ranging from 6 to 20. So attribute A has integers ranging from 6 to 20. How many integers are possible for the attribute A? 15 integers. Starting from 6 to 20. What about attribute B? Attribute B has integers ranging from 1 to 20. So there are 20 distinct numbers that are possible for attribute B. And there are 15 distinct numbers that are possible for attribute A. But our output is going to contain all the rows where attribute A is greater than 10 or B is equal to 18 or both. Because this is our condition. Either this should be satisfied or this should be satisfied or both should be satisfied. So, there are 10 distinct integers for attribute A. What are they? From 6 to 20, greater than 10 means from 11 to 20. Meaning, 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 20, there are 10 distinct integers. What about for B? There is one distinct integer for B is equal to 18 out of 20 possibilities. I mean, there are 20 numbers from 1 to 20 for B, out of which we are focused on only 18. Whereas for A, out of 15 numbers, we are going to focus only on numbers that are greater than 10. A greater than 10 means from 11 to 20, there are 10 distinct numbers and the values range from 6 to 20. So it is 10 upon 15 basically. Don't worry about this. I'm going to solve this shortly. Let's take this given data to a new slide so that it will be easy for us to solve. Here is the given data. Now let's focus on the conditions. Remember, A is greater than 10 or B is equal to 18 or both because this is our operation. In order to solve this in an easier way, let's take the way of probability. We will make this as one event. We will make this as the other event. So this is the event probability of A. This is another event probability of B. So probability of A greater than 10 is the first event where we have 10 upon 15 because out of 15 there are 10 distinct integers. So 10 upon 15 which is equal to 2 upon 3. Coming to the second condition B is equal to 18 out of 20 one distinct integer. So B is equal to 18 means 1 upon 20. As I told you this should be true or this should be true or both. Right? So this and this. So probability of A greater than 10 and probability of B is equal to 18 is equal to 2 upon 3 multiplied by 1 upon 20 which is equal to 1 upon 30. So we have identified the required inputs. In order to solve this, we are going to take the basic probabilities addition theorem which is probability of A greater than 10 or probability of B is equal to 18 means probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of the occurrence of both the events, right? This is event 1, this is event 2, minus the occurrence of both the events. We need to understand very important thing here. This is an independent event, right? I'll just show you the question. In the question, they have clearly mentioned attribute A and B are independently distributed. It means, let's say attribute A has a value called 6. B can be anything. It can be 1 or 2 or 3 up to 20. Any number can be there for any value of A. That's what exactly independently distributed. So, the attribute A and attribute B are independently distributed meaning 
any value for A, there can be any value for B because A and B are the attributes of the relation R. In a row, any value for A from the range 6 to 20, there can be any value for B from the range 1 to 20. There is no mutually exclusive event. This is purely independently distributed. And that is why this value, probability of the occurrence of A and the probability of occurrence of B will be a non-zero value. I mean this part will be a non-zero value because it is an independent event. What is an independent event? The probability of occurrence of A is not affected by the probability of the occurrence of B. That's why A and B are independent events. So this will be a non-zero value and that's why we are getting 1 upon 30 here. In case they are mutually exclusive events, what do we mean by mutually exclusive events? In probability theory, mutually exclusive events mean that cannot occur at the same time. I mean either this or this. Both cannot occur at the same time. But here, a value for A can be anything between 6 and 20. Value for B can be anything between 1 and 20. And both can occur at the same time because they are independently distributed. And that's why this is a non-zero value. If you want, I will give some examples for mutually exclusive events. Just take a single coin. A single coin toss can be only a head or a tails, but not both. Another example, a die when it is rolled, it cannot give both 5 and 3 at the same time. I mean, a single die cannot give both 5 and 3 at the same time. Choose either Pepsi or Coca-Cola, but not both at the same time. These are the examples of mutually exclusive events. But in this case, this is an independent event. Examples, let's say flipping a coin is event 1 and rolling a dice is event 2. Flipping a coin, whether it gives heads or tails, it does not impact the occurrence of B. I mean rolling a dice. Any number is possible for the dice, whether it is heads or tails in the other event. With head, a rolling die can give any number. With tail, a rolling die can give any number because they are independent events. With this knowledge, let's continue solving this. We have identified all the required inputs. Just substitute the values what we have obtained. For the probability of A greater than 10, it's 2 upon 3. For probability of B is equal to 18, is 1 upon 20, which is this, minus the occurrence of both, which is 1 upon 30, which is this. Upon simplification, we get it for a single tuple. The question they have mentioned, there are 1,200 tuples. So the estimated number of tuples is equal to 41 upon 60 multiplied by 1,200, which gives 820 tuples. So the right answer for this question is 820 tuples. I would request you to make a note of this addition theorem, the basic probabilities addition theorem formula. If we are aware of this, we can solve any problem of this nature. Only thing is we need to identify whether this is an independent event or mutually exclusive event. If it's mutually exclusive event, the probability of the occurrence of both the events is equal to zero. I mean probability of A intersection B is equal to zero. So the right answer is 820. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.